Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, September 19th, 2020, and today we're going to be taking a look at a 2020 Senate forecast from 538. So they actually released this yesterday, I believe, and the Senate now more than ever is super important. We're going to be taking a look at a number of close races where, honestly, at this point, a lot of things are going to change about the next 45 days until the election. Um, if you hadn't heard, I'm sure most of you have, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, unfortunately, last night um, due to complications with cancer. Very, very unfortunate situation for both parties and for America in general. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about President Trump considering putting forth the nominee as early as Tuesday. Um, all in all, the Republican Party likely will not um, be able to, you know, Benefit from, benefit from this situation by any means. A number of notable Republican senators in the past had said they would not vote to confirm or even put forth a vote if there was to be a situation where there is a presidential election, in this case 2020, as they said 2020, um, and now it looks like the entirety of the, the Republican Party's stance on the issue has changed. Uh, the unfortunate reality for the Democratic Party is they likely will not have enough votes to block this. After Mitch McConnell changed the filibuster rules, it's really the Republican Party's game. Um, and at this point, the Democrats really need to focus on the Senate if they do want to consider possibly, you know, maybe packing the courts or even uh, if they did have the possibility of replacing RBG um, in the Supreme Court. So uh, obviously very, very unfortunate situation. I will be paying my respects on Sunday evening in D.C., um, I'm not home right now. I would have gone last night, but I'm three hours away from the nation's capital. So um, I will be back and I will tell you that, you know, the situation that has unfolded is practically insane. On the same night of her passing, Mitch McConnell says that he's going to, you know, put forth a vote. And I think that is probably one of the worst things that I've ever seen from a politician. And that may come off as me being partisan. But at the end of the day, if someone passes away that evening and two hours later, you say we're replacing you immediately i mean republican or democrat that was just so unnerving um which is exactly why we're going to be talking about the senate most importantly today because this is exactly you know this is the group of people that will be confirming or denying potential nominations for the supreme court so uh, i think we've all had a lot to dive into let's go ahead and just focus on the senate video and not focus on the very real reality of the situation, if I was to put it plainly. So let's take a look at the United States Senate forecast. Um, first things first, the Democrats are slightly favored to win the Senate. Thankfully, 538 has given us three options. They've given us a, a solid polling option, which means just the Senate map based off polls and what that means for the Democrats and the Republicans. They have another forecast which talks about past voting patterns and a number of things uh, that goes into the Senate forecast normally, and then a deluxe one, which includes expert ratings. So we'll start off with the poll one just because uh, the one you're seeing right now is the expert one, but let's start off or the deluxe one. Let's start off with the light, which is uh, based off polls alone. So the Democratic Party actually has a 68% chance at winning control based off of this map. Let's take a look at what the map actually looks like so if you're wondering why every single state may have two dots versus a box a box means that there are a senate election up in that state two dots means there isn't a senate election up in the state um, it is a little bit confusing to take a look at which is why i wish they had included a map similar to uh 2016 but again i'm not the one making these calls so let's take a look at where the democratic party is getting their majority from so we can see based off of polls alone <clears throat> the forecasted senate Gives the Democrats victories, starting off in this, uh, you know, this, oh, it highlights up here, so I'm actually going to need to scroll up. But you can see, you know, where these, um, oh, wow, my computer is really lagging. It's really struggling to keep up. Um, I did not mean to click on Rhode Island. Okay, uh, let's go back to take a look at where the Democrats are getting their seats from, you know, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, all the way around. But here's where the swing states start rolling in. So New Hampshire. You know, that's a state that obviously was going to go to the Democrats, New Mexico as well. And then it moves over to Arizona. Surprisingly, Arizona is next in line to go to the Democrats before even Colorado. It goes Arizona, then Minnesota. These are based off polls, by the way. So it is up to the polling firms um, with the data that gets released. Then to Michigan, then to Colorado. Isn't that interesting? Arizona, Minnesota, Michigan, then 
Colorado, even though Hickenlooper is running in that race. It's actually one of the closer ones. And then we move over to Maine. This is Sarah Gideon's race. Then you move over to the next battleground state, which is North Carolina, Cal Cunningham's race. And this is where the Democrats go over the top in terms of polling data, which is Iowa. Now, Joni Ernst is still the uh, expected winner. But we can, you know, if a situation unfolds where the Democratic Party is outperforming the numbers that were released last night, then it's possible Teresa Greenfield wins there. But still, even based off polls, the Democrats are still favored to lose Montana or expected to lose, not favored, expected to lose Montana to lose Kansas. But get this, Kansas and Montana are more competitive than Georgia based off polls, which I think is fascinating. South Carolina. And then I think we hit Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Alaska, Georgia, special, Texas, Tennessee, then Alabama. Wow. Okay. Well, that's very unfortunate for Doug Jones. So let's move past this model. Let's talk about the classic, which is based off fundraising, polls, and past voting patterns. So this gives the Democratic Party a 64% chance at winning the United States Senate, so the Republicans have a 36% chance of retaining it. These numbers are a lot better than the numbers were in 2016 for the Democrats, at least state by state, maybe not the overall percentage. So let's look at where the Democratic Party gets to their majority here. The reason why they get to a majority with a 50-50 tie is because Joe Biden is still the favorite to win the election. Until that changes, the Democratic Party will likely always be in favor of winning the Senate because all they need is 50 seats. Because then, the, assuming Biden wins, then Vice President Kamala Harris will end up breaking that tie and give the Democrats the majority. So we can see where the Democrats are getting their support from. So as we move past these solid states, um, New Hampshire, Virginia, then New Hampshire, then New Mexico, then Minnesota then Michigan, then Arizona. So it actually changes a little bit. Um, based off polls, Arizona was a little bit further to the left than Minnesota and Michigan, but that has now changed Arizona, then Colorado, which I think is in insanely fascinating in a sense. Um, and then we have North Carolina, and you can guess it, the next one is Maine. This is actually the closest race right now, um, which I think is crazy. Um, expected, but still, Maine is the closest race. And also, like I said, based off the voting patterns, we still have Steen Danes expected to win in Montana. We still have David Perdue to win in Georgia. In the special election, we have Kelly Loeffler and Doug Collins neck and neck practically. Um, in Kansas, there is still Roger Marshall. He still has a good chance of winning, but Barbara Boulier is roughly 46% of the expected vote. So still pretty strong support for Democrats in a number of the Senate races. Joni Ernst expands her chance of winning to 60%. Now let's move on to the deluxe which includes expert ratings which shows you that the democratic party actually has the lowest chance at winning uh, based off all the three uh potential forecasts but the democrats have a 57 percent chance at winning the united states senate and the senate is going to be crucial for way more than just supreme court picks um, but the unfortunate reality for the republican party is that they are going to be really messed up with the way that they vote in some of these races because what we see is that the Democratic Party will likely hold on to these 46 seats. They are currently holding them right now, and they are pretty solid for the Democrats at this point. If you're wondering where the lost Senate seat is going, it's to Alabama. So these six seats, which I consider to be your screwed state, which means regardless of how these senators vote on a potential nominee that Mitch McConnell says he will put forth before the election, this will royally screw over their election. I'll tell you that much. These six, um, you know, these six Senate seats could put the Democratic Party in a much better position because that forecast was prior to RBG. It was on the same day, but prior to. And if we're looking at the numbers and we're looking at where, you know, Martha McSally just tweeted out, you know, we will vote. Like the unelected senator said, what? It doesn't really make sense. Why are you speaking on it? You're already underwater by 10% to Mark Kelly. Now you're trying to make that 15. That's gone, regardless of how she votes. In Colorado, Cory Gardner is already disliked by his constituents. Doesn't really matter how he votes. He's gone in that Senate race. In Maine, Susan Collins, even if she uh, opposes uh, the nomination, if it doesn't block, if it does not prevent you know, Amy Barrett or whoever Trump puts forward to get on the Supreme Court, she's going down. I mean, the De Republican Party is at a very tricky situation here. Because when we saw Kavanaugh's vote, that really negatively reflected on a number of these Democrat incumbents in 2018, and they lost. They paid the price for it. And now the Republicans are up in traditional swing states or Democratic states, and they are expecting to win states. Now, the only state that isn't exactly a swing state or a Democratic state is South Carolina. And the reason why I think that South Carolina may actually be one of those states where, you know, Lindsey Graham is screwed is because if Lindsey Graham does not vote, let's say he chooses to not vote um, for the nominee because he said use my words against me we will not confirm someone but he chose us to confirm them well jamie harrison's already neck and neck with him it's not going to get much better from there that's gonna you know if he votes to confirm there's a lot of people who may say you know what i'm an independent i typically lean to the right 
but I can't trust him anymore. Or let's say he denies, you know, the nomination or votes present. Um, it's very possible that Lindsey Graham loses that solid conservative base that he held on to because he's already lost it with the potential, you know, rumors about him. Um, not lost a very significant portion of it. He wouldn't be competitive if he had. But let's say that happens. What if those, you know, Trump supporters that are full-fledged Trump supporters just don't vote for the Senate election? You know, let it go to the Democrats in the hopes that they could win it back six years later. Think about that. That's a that's a very real voting block. And then we look in North Carolina and Iowa. These are two traditionally Republican states, or at least lean to the or the right. Um, but at the same time absolutely competitive and the democratic party has now gone into this election with tremendous energy but what we're going to see is even more and i think the republican party is not prepared for that because it's not just this these six states that have been competitive that are competitive on the 538 senate map it's now kansas and you know alabama and georgia and georgia senate special election and montana and now kentucky or texas being considered toss-ups i mean these are states that the democratic party they weren't even on their radar you know a year ago Alaska being included. I mean, it's insane. The Democratic Party's reach will now get further because of this. And it's very unfortunate that this situation, I mean, it, it's so sad that RBG passed away, but it's a very grim reality for the Democratic Party that if they do not win the Senate and Trump wins re-election, there's nothing they can do. So at most, they need to focus on the Senate. The presidential race seems to be shaping up to be a Biden victory, but there's 45 days to go. A lot can change. But the Senate is where it really matters because those checks and balances are really important very very important and if the democrats don't win it here nobody's waiting out till 2022 while those senate elections may seem more favorable for the democrats it doesn't matter it is possible that trump will get in you know a replacement absolutely i mean if trump wins re-election the republicans hold the senate doesn't matter there's no lame duck situation there is no you know possibility of them holding that off until the 2022 midterms till the year 2023 when they're sworn in um, there is a situation with Mark Kelly. If he wins the election in November, he will be sworn in by the end of November. So that's another vote the Democrats can count on. But at the end of the day, if these six senators who you know are in tricky re-election, but if they vote to confirm or vote against, it doesn't matter. It's going to hurt their campaign regardless. Um, but the Democratic Party likely will expect Lisa Murkowski in Alaska and Susan Collins to vote with them. But there's no guarantee of anything. And keep in mind the Republicans hold a 53 to 47 majority in the United States Senate. So when we're looking at the Senate map, when we're looking at the deluxe rating that has, you know, probably the most accurate chance of predicting the overall um, victor, the Democrats are only at 57 percent chance at taking the majority. Why? Because they have very close races in Maine. It's the closest expected to be super narrow. Sarah Gideon has a 52 percent chance at winning there. She's expected to win by 0.6 percent for Democrats and surrounding. I mean, in other swing states, Cal Cunningham, he's expected to win by a little bit over 2 percent. In Iowa, Joni Ernst is expected to win this state. But if she does have a situation where she doesn't back Trump's nominee or she, you know, backs Trump's nominee, it's going to be very difficult to maneuver that. And this election has made it a lot trickier for politicians. And if we're looking um, in Montana, Steve Daines probably won't be hurt regardless of how he votes. He's likely to vote to confirm whoever Trump puts up. But, uh, you know, this race is still pretty close. But the Democratic Party really needs to focus on a lot of these Senate races because, you know, they're worried now. But I can only imagine how worried they would be if the Democrats lose the Senate, if Trump is to win his reelection bid, and what that would mean for Democrats in the future. Because like I said, nobody is waiting until January 2023 for a new Senate to enter. It doesn't really matter. Because even if they do want to have the idea of packing the courts, Trump's not going to nominate anyone that could actually be there for packing the courts. So based off this 538 model, now more than ever, the Senate matters. But the Democratic Party is only narrowly favored. They have a 57% chance at winning the Senate. The Republicans have a 43% chance at retaining control. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 Senate election videos. I'm likely to upload. I'm not likely. I definitely will be uploading recapped videos based off of my previous predictions and versus, you know, now 45 days until the election. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.